We are going to be joined by Zoom by Judge Johanna Krichler, Chair for Freedom Under Law. Very good afternoon to Judge Krichler. Thank you for your time with us here on the ACBC. Good afternoon, Lisa, and good afternoon to the viewers. So Freedom Under Law, which obviously is a public interest organisation founded by you, approached the ACA to rule uh, Mutata should be found guilty of gross misconduct instead of misconduct. South Africa has never seen an impeachment process. I mean, this outcome can also serve as a case study perhaps going forward. Can you talk to the shortcomings in legislation of the case, which has delayed the matter for so long? Lisa, yes, it's, it's a long debate and we'll, we'll make it very quick and very practical. The case is officially about Judge Mortata. It's actually about the Judicial Service Commission. The Judicial Service Commission that has failed to do the job that the Constitution requires it to do. It has failed to do so for a number of reasons. Some of them are administrative, some of them are legal, some of them are, are, are just purely personal. The Judicial Service Commission Act has a structure that is very complicated when you want, want to discipline judges. It is long, inherently long. It is tricky and we think it is too detailed. It should be amended. We've actually re reported to the JSE. We issued a, a very detailed report in November last year in which we outlined what is wrong and how it should be repaired. It is also that the JSC has failed to deal properly with uh, judges that misbehave. Not because of the legal rules that are tricky, but because they are unwilling to deal with sufficient firmness with judges that have stepped out of line and unfitted themselves for judicial office. The Motata case is one example. The Schlopper case is the more glaring, glaring other example. So in the result, we've had cases running for 16 years without coming to a conclusion and the image of the judiciary suffers severely in the result. That's why we went to court in the first place. That's why we took the wrong decision in the provincial court to the blueprint and to the Supreme Court of Appeal to have it corrected there. And that's why we are gratified that we now have a judgment that says to the Judicial Service Commission, you cannot do your job like this. Thank you for that context. Perhaps let me expand on the point of the image of the judiciary at this point, uh, Judge Johan Krichler. What well, has enjoyed the title of judge as the matter, you know, had to be resolved. What stain did this put on the judiciary from 2007, perhaps until now, as a result? All right, uh, let me repeat the question. Perhaps if, if, you, if you can hear me, Judge Krichler, I want to speak to the image of the judiciary, which is a point you've now also highlighted. Mutata has enjoyed the title of judges as the matter had to be resolved. And I want to expand on what stain this case has put on the judiciary, perhaps from 2007 until now as a result. Diesel, Diesel, please. The image of the judiciary is harmed by the dithering in a case such as this. The image of the judiciary is harmed when it is apparent to the public at large that the constitutional body that should be dealing with defaulting judges does not act as it should. It is harmful to the image of the judiciary it's harmful to the rule of law and consequently it is harmful to the constitutional health of the country and of all of us. The remedy in the first place is that the membership of the Judicial Service Commission should have a radical look at itself and decide it has now got to pull up its socks and behave in accordance with what the Supreme Court of Appeal says it should be doing. That's the first step. Legislative and administrative change can come in due course. 
Let's talk to those changes at the JSC at this point, um, which is uh, something you've alluded to now. We wanted to look at where a body like the JSC sources its power to override a judicial tribunal report that makes a gross misconduct finding, perhaps draws it back to that of a misconduct, also exonerating the judge from, from being held accountable from a Section 177 process. Elisa, if you, if you look at the, the Mutat provision in the rules and in the regulations and the Act is for a body called the Judicial Conduct Tribunal to sit as a court with three members to decide whether a member who has been charged with gross misconduct is indeed so guilty. It runs its proceedings carefully, publicly, like a court with full rights of representation for the uh, uh, respondent judge concerned. In this instance, the JCT did its job with great care and precision and it came to a reasoned, rational, manifestly correct opinion in the end, saying to the JSC, we recommend that this man be sent to Parliament for impeachment. The JSC, for reasons of its own, decided by a majority that they rejected the opinion of the JCT. Not only did they reject the opinion, they rejected and for no reason apparent on the record anywhere, they decided that the Judicial Conduct Tribunal had been mistaken. It's that conduct, that uh, irrational conduct by the JSC that has caused Judge Bonham in the J SCA judgment to use language uh, of the Judicial Service Commission. Uh, it's, it's, it's members simply not doing what they are in duty bound, supposed to do. For the respondent, whether it's out of sympathy for the respondent, whether it is for some or other ideological, political, emotional, or whatever other reason, they cannot allow those interests to persuade them not to do their duty such as the law demands of them. Thank you for that, um, Judge Krichla. I want to also perhaps look at uh, the way forward. So looking at cases going forward, what impact is this going to have um, on, on people possibly facing similar scenarios? Perhaps also looking at if an appeal is an option, how, how is this also going to, to impact outcomes at this point? Lisa, I, I don't know whether there's going to be an attempt to take the matter on appeal to the Supreme, uh, to the uh, Constitutional Court. The Judicial Service Commission may decide to do so. I think they would be gravely mistaken if they did so, because there's no issue of principle involved here. It is merely that the Supreme Court of Appeal pointed out where on the facts it it's not really a case for the constitutional court the matter of principle in this sense that it has shown once again that the judicial service commission has to be uh, clever people within its ranks persuade the majority to decide they are bound by the law and the rules as are set down in the Constitution and in the Judicial Service Commission Act. That precedent has now been reaffirmed by the Supreme Court of Appeal and in that respect it is to be welcomed. It is also to be welcomed, the decision is also to be welcomed in this respect that it does give to Parliament, to the, the National Assembly, when the case comes before it, a clear indication of what the facts are in this case. In this case, so it, to that extent, it has been a, a 
beneficial judgment beyond merely settling the Mutata case. It has decided matters of mm. uh, guidance for the next body that will have to be deal with, have to deal with the possible dismissal of Judge Mutata. I think it's been useful in that regard. Mm. Judge Johan Krichler, thank you for your time with us here on the SABC.